Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. So back in January of this year, French President Emmanuel Macron got into a bit of hot water with a bunch of West African leaders when he said that the uncertainty over the increased opposition against France in the Sahel region and the leaders of the states that France has military power in them owe him an explanation as to the uh, you know, hesitance about working with France, basically. And, of course, these various West African leaders didn't like or appreciate that very much. Why do they owe France anything? Well, as I pointed before, it has to do with French entitlement, but it also has to do with France potentially losing, still, their power and influence. This is something they really don't want. They are still trying to hold on, like Britain, to being this massive global power. You know, we have influence, and this is why we get to Operation Barkhane. Operation Barkhane is a large-scale French military deployment across several nations in West Africa. And to put this in perspective, it is the largest deployment of French troops overseas since the Algerian War. That was in the 60s, and it was very bloody and costly on both sides, and is still a source of bitterness for them. And so, with their various troops and bases spread from, again, Mali to Chad, this begs the question of why they're here and why they're doing it. So, as I mentioned before in the previous video, it is ostensibly about the war on terror. And this is also why America has largely shifted its focus in the war on terror to Africa, particularly the Sahel region, which is again where a lot of these conflict with um, various independence movements and Muslim extremists tend to end up now. So America is just kind of following wherever the trail leads them, and it's led them to West and Central Africa. But then we have to talk about who else is getting involved here. This also brings us to Canada, my nation, which, to briefly sum up, in a post-World War II world with the independence and decolonialization process, Canada got very cozy with several of the newly independent countries, partially just to say, oh, welcome to the Independence Club, but also to promote ties with former British colonies in the Commonwealth and with now French colonies former colonies in La Francophonie, because Canada is both English and French. And some nations like Senegal, the Gambia, and Cameroon are also largely bilingual to a certain extent. And so Canada kind of saw an avenue to uh, very politely and warmly ingratiate itself into several West African states, which then opened up economic opportunities, particularly those for the mining industry. The Canadian mining industry, little known to most people, and I'm going to make a video about this at some point, is one of the worst and most exploitative and cruel in the entire world. From Latin America to Africa, our abuses are massive, and it's part of why now we're seeing some more stories of Canadians, whether they are missionaries or workers for mining companies, being kidnapped by Islamic extremists in various parts of Central and Western Africa, like Mali and Chad and Niger, and being held hostage or worse, killed. So now Canada has a strategic uh, interest in going to Africa. And in fact, a few years ago, some friends of mine in the Canadian military said that they were taking bets on where their next deployment was going to be. And the two main choices were, we're either going to Mali or to the Congo. It ended up being Mali. Again, ostensibly war on terror, but also to secure mining rights. And so I want to talk again a little bit about economic exploitation, but also the war on terror and how it's being used, especially inappropriately. So I talked a bit about... Um, Operation Barkhane being just huge for the French. Um, and the French seem to like to intervene in West Africa a lot. They were the first in the skies over Libya in 2011. 
and they're also some of the biggest advocates who pay attention to the situation in um, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, and Libya in general, because they know that that also affects their preferred sphere of influence in Western and Central Africa. So why is France so afraid of losing power, especially since they've spent all this time trying to organize, especially French West Africa, into something resembling a federation, which is now in its newest form, ECOWAS, the, econo the economic community of West African states. Why is France mad about this? Because it means they lose their money, their power, and their influence, and they're playing at big old superpower. And then how are they going to justify greater military expenditures if they have no more wars or are no longer welcome in West African states? America is also afraid of this because they need their bases and their um, drone airfields to operate without any kind of uh, interference whatsoever in various parts of Africa. This is part of why we should pay more attention to Nigeria and its current problems because Nigeria, as I've said before, is kind of the hub that ties Africa together. It's got a Muslim North, Christian South, various different religious and ethnic and linguistic communities, rich in oil, rich in people, has potential to be a great economic power, but it's right at this nexus, and it's an important sort of base of operations for a lot of people, and that's why everyone wants to get in Nigeria's good books, including little old Canada. And so I'm really torn by what this means for the region, because since like the independence of Algeria in 1960, France has intervened militarily more than 50 times on the continent of Africa. America just about as many times, usually in some form of covert CIA proxy war thing to fight against the Soviets. Why do we need to continue to exploit these people and these nations? Why do we need to have continued involvement, militarily or otherwise, to exploit these various nations? Now, I know I've already talked and answered this question to an extent with it's about economics and power and prestige. But it also has to do with lithium, which I touched on a bit in the last video. Lithium is very important. And as we've seen in Bolivia, some places will not hesitate to lead a coup if uh, they dare not get their lithium. And so Africa is never going to be allowed, broadly speaking, to be independent so long as they can continue to provide what we need from them, which are minerals to make our Western society continue and our lovely electronics that we keep on us at all times. It's not about Islam. It's not about power prestige anymore. It's about maintaining the facade of success and industrialism. Because if Africa is allowed to have what we have, then what makes us different? What makes us special? What makes us superior, which is the undercurrent of all of this, from Macron and saying, oh, these African leaders owe me an explanation. No, they don't. They're independent leaders. They don't owe you jack shit. For the entitlement, according to Charles de Gaulle himself, in the wake of World War II, the entitlement to a sphere of influence and being a global superpower, the entitlement to power and prestige to lick their wounds after they lost their first colonial empire. The, the entitlement of China, of them being an ascendant power, and that they have a right to economic exploitation, just as they had been the victims of themselves. It all comes down to exploitation and feelings of entitlement and superiority. And of course, especially with regards to Western Europe and good old North America, we feel entitled to it because 
we are successful and you are not because you are poor, but you are poor because we made you this way. It is supposed to be this way. And if you challenge that, we will find any reason, economic, military, or otherwise, to intervene. And so I wish these people who complain about refugees showing up from Africa and North Africa and the Middle East and Latin America and all these areas that we spend billions on exploiting rather than helping. If we could just have these people shut up for a second and actually realize the problems that are happening here and how it is our fault and therefore our responsibility to help fix this. We deliberately, we as Western societies continue to deliberately exploit these people and not help them fix their systems because that doesn't make sense for our economic overlords in the neoliberal order. It's a small club and we're not in it. And so that is the crux of all of this. That Africa, no matter from who it is, whether they're Asian, European, North American, they are never going to be given the chance to properly govern and democratize and economically develop themselves if it interferes with the existing neoliberal order of globalism, which is an incredibly unfair form of globalism. That is, I am hoping, the heart of the matter that people could sort of see as the undercurrent behind this whole thing. It's just constant colonialism with Africa. And it's a shame because from north to south and east to west, it is a incredibly beautiful and diverse continent that has every chance of succeeding. And there are already some notable starters. While imperfect, nations like Kenya, Tanzania, Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritius. There are nations in Africa that are trying to make, Rwanda even. There are nations in Africa trying to make genuine strides towards progress and democracy and representation but because of the situation we have set up it is a mountain that they have to climb and it is a mountain that we have made for them and so i really hope that people can pay a little more attention to what happens in africa and instead of complaining about oh they're so poor why don't they get their act together Please share these stories. I know this was largely focused on just the French, but it's broadly speaking the story of Africa in general, whether it was under the Portuguese, the British, the Germans, the Belgians, the Italians, whoever. It is largely the same story. And the fact that we don't recognize this or know about this or are taught this and can appreciate that this is the problem that we have created for ourselves is definitely what's bothering me today.